we have to start uh this uh this is live and direct uh on youtube uh you are watching live and direct on facebook live and direct on twitter live and direct on twitch and this evening uh we will be uh discussing the issue uh about nigeria from a perspective from a different perspective and with us this evening we have uh from the republic of ireland uh some of the people who are interested uh and who have been following what is going on in nigeria especially the uh the, the killings of christians in nigeria and uh, i will be uh introducing uh, uh our guests today uh from mr ronin uh to from mr ronin to mr liam and then to uh trisha uh when i will be introducing them uh you 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 can most of you our viewers can you know present your questions if you would like them to comment or if you want uh, to ask a question you know uh you know concerning how the uh the people in uh, in diaspora the international community you know what how they the kind of interest that that they are showing in the killings of christians in nigeria at the moment and then of course by extension it has to do also with the agitation for biafra biafra uh, and nigeria went to war uh, between 1967 uh, and 1970 and uh, after this war uh, it was uh, declared no victor no vanquish but that did not happen the uh, northern nigeria has continued to promote the islamic agenda they have continued to do everything to see that the other section of the country are subdued and conquered and we the biafra people have continued to push the awareness for the entire world to know what is going on in nigeria the genocide that is taking place in nigeria and this awareness is now hitting at the right target and that is the reason why you are going to see with me all the way from the republic of ireland these uh, people that have come to discuss on the killings of christians in nigeria today so i'm gonna bring you on all of you one after the other uh mr ronin good evening from here and good evening from here good evening mr ronin you are an ex-police officer do you can you tell us have you heard about nigeria before and what is going on there well, we only pick up small bits and pieces from Facebook and what have you. One of the big problems is that the uh, Nigerian Facebook is not widely accessible here. And so like a lot of the European countries, we only just pick up bits and pieces. One of the big problems that is needed is for the Nigerians and for particular the Biafrans to get contact with the various uh, television stations and let them know what is going on. We only see little clips, but unfortunately, um, we don't get full story. And part of what we see is uh, it can be false news, fake news. So we need you to show us true news and continue feeding it through to every European country until they realize that people are dying in the streets, people are being murdered. There's 200 million Nigerians, 113 are... Uh, uh, th oh, we're having, I think we're having some network. We're having some network. 13 million in Biafra, sure somebody can find a way to get the news out to the rest of the world. We are having some network issues uh, with uh, Ron, uh, Mr. Ronan. Uh, Mr. Ronan, I'm still going to come back to you because uh, what you said now is very, very important. 
I'm still going to come back to you. We have some network issues. Your your voice uh, was hanging, and uh, the picture as well uh, was also hanging. So I'm going to come back to you because there is something you said we didn't get very clearly. You said that uh, um, most of you are seeing very little news about Nigeria, and uh, well, you know, the, uh, for the little information you've got, they are all coming from the Facebook and probably from this awareness that we have been creating. So apart from this, you are also advising that it is time we begin to approach the mainstream media, international media, news media, and all that. So that's a very important uh, uh, advice, which I believe most of the beer friends are listening right now, and uh, we are going to do exactly that. But thank you for at least showing the interest uh, you, know, you, have, you have shown this evening by appearing here to discuss the issue of Biafra and Nigeria with us. Welcome, Mr. Ronan. Thank you very much. And uh, whatever you want me to contribute, just ask. As I said, what's badly needed all around Europe and the rest of the world is genuine first-hand knowledge from uh, your good country showing what has happened to you and to the members of your public because the rest of the world don't know or else they're for vested reasons of oil gold or whatever they are closing their eyes to it the united nations need at this stage to be forced into uh, looking after you and seeing what can be done on a human rights issue Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we are waiting for Trisha. Trisha is having some, some kind of uh, network, uh, network issues. Uh, uh, I'm going to ask her uh, to try to log in back uh, because uh, the network issue uh, is not only on her side. Uh, please, uh, Trisha. Uh, yeah, your, your, please, you can, Trisha, you can use your phone. You can use your phone. You don't need to use your computer. You can use your phone. Uh, use your phone. Uh, so, Mr. Mr. Liam, welcome. Uh, can we hear from you? How have you been hearing about in Nigeria and what is going on there? Can you tell us a bit about yourself too? Well, most of the information I can get from kind of like uh, um, what I'm wondering is where is the UN and all of this? Are there any NGOs out there trying to work, trying to do something? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Liam, you are wondering uh, where is the UN? This is exactly the question everybody is asking. Everybody is asking this question: uh, Where is the UN? And of course, that is the reason why we are bringing people like you because this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, this uh, issue to save humanity is going to come. It is something that everybody has to be part of. Uh, there, there has been uh, little or no effort from the United Nations. Uh, only recently, uh, after the killing of uh, innocent Nigerians who were protesting against the police uh, brutality in Lagos, only after then, the UN uh, started showing some kind of uh, interest and started making some kind of a statement. Uh, but uh, prior to that, the, uh, the killings of uh, innocent Nigerians, Christians, and uh, Biafrans has been going on since 1960 or even before 1960. And uh, on daily basis, uh, people are being killed. And most of these uh, people that are being killed in, Nigerians, in Nigeria are all Christians. And, uh, you know, we have this uh, uh, information that uh, the killings it has to do with the Islamization of Nigeria. And with what has happened so far, uh, everybody should agree to that. It is the reason the United States of America has just blacklisted Nigeria, you know, just uh, a few days ago. The, the US blacklisted Nigeria. And first of all, they placed Nigeria on watch list because the government of Nigeria has openly shown their support for terrorists. They have openly funded terrorism through a shady deals with the terrorists, like the abduction of school children, for example. 
These children will be abducted and the government will pay ransom in an exchange and at the same time release the captured terrorists. So they have directly funded the terrorism and the killings of Christians in Nigeria. Remember, the, the current president, the man they called Buhari, has been known as a pro-Islamist before ever coming uh, as a president. So, so now the United Nations, uh, the United States blacklisted Nigeria. The International Criminal Court, the ICC, is also investigating Nigeria, and they have actually opened a case. But because all these organizations has failed, you know, we we are believing they have failed us but we have not lost hope we continue to believe that from now on because of the exposition we are doing and creating massive awareness using the social media and other media platform we will be able to succeed in at least you know coming to an aid of <laughs> those who are yet to be killed by the nigeria government of the caliphate I'm sure it's more difficult at this point to raise awareness given the fact that the world has its eyes on uh, COVID-19 so it's probably much more difficult to raise awareness what's going on. Mr. Liam, Mr. Liam, the, uh, the, uh, the network, you know, I, I, barely, I barely can hear you. I think uh, the network is uh, somehow uh, very uh, bad or either that you are a little bit far away from from the okay, I'll try it again. Um, I, what I'm saying is that the with the current uh, focus on COVID-19 around the world, I'm sure it's much more difficult to raise awareness of this escalation in Nigeria violence killing of Christians. Yeah, the COVID. Yeah, the COVID-19. You know, of course, uh, has uh, has done a lot. A lot of uh, uh, damages and has delayed uh, most of the things that uh, you know we should have done. Uh, but uh, we, we hopefully from uh, uh, next year January, if the COVID-19, uh, you know, we have we will have some kind of uh, uh, a little bit uh, easy easy uh, lockdown, or if the lockdown is lifted, because most of the countries, most of the government are on lockdown and everything is being handled uh you know online and and for this reason of course it has delayed delayed a lot of things but nigeria has become uh the interest of so many nations around the world and uh, what what we are trying to do is to make sure that people like you uh who have found yourself in a, a position you know to to speak especially for Christians, uh, that we bring you aboard, and from there, because you know the awareness now is that most of you don't, uh, the, most of the mainstream media are not reporting the issues and the incident that is happening in Nigeria. And through people like you, through bringing Christian, Christians, religious organization from across the board, we will be able to reach out to people. Okay. Mr. Lamb. Simon, looking at, at what we're talking about, if you remember that Ireland was only uh, a third of the size of uh, Biafra, we went through all the same problems that you're going through, and yet we managed to pull ourselves up. It would appear that the Biafrans need to bind together. They need to force their information onto the United Nations, onto all the European countries. Unless they do, nobody will pay attention to them. Your so-called president that nobody seems to know whether it's the real one or not, does not seem to care so much about the east of the country. So you badly need to build yourselves together to get the publicity that's needed. You need true news, not anything that can be dictated as false news, and get it across all the newspapers and television throughout Europe and the rest of the world. That's the only way the world is going to look in to see what's happening. 
right now they're too involved and too interested in their own problems. But they're nothing like the ones that you have there. I mean, you need to have your women being protected and not wandering off on their own. You need to be able to let your children go out and play without them being kidnapped. And right now that's not happening in your country. So the world has to be told what it's really like. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Ronam. That's exactly uh, what, what we are going through. Uh, the president uh, is not paying attention to what is happening in the eastern uh, Nigeria. And, uh, uh, and the president has never, ever condemned the Fulani uh, terrorist group who have committed a lot of killings, atrocities against our women and children. And uh, you, uh, as, a, as, a, as a, an ex-police officer, uh, you know, we, we, we have lost faith in the police in Nigeria because they have recruited the uh, terrorist group. Uh, they have recruited this terrorist uh, into them. And this is not like fake news or anything like that. They have also recruited terrorists into Nigeria army. And uh, just uh, recently, the, uh, the uh, parliament of the United Kingdom uh, uh, you know, the, the group of parliamentary members of the United Kingdom, they wrote to the Secretary General of the Commonwealth and uh, made a very strong allegation that the, some uh, uh, high-rank uh, uh, military officers in Nigeria has been, you know, uh, confirmed to be complicit in the violence in Nigeria. So now, uh, having uh, this uh, uh, distrust in the security system of Nigeria, the uh, indigenous people of Biafra, uh, led by Mazi Namdikano, on Saturday, this last Saturday, unveiled our own indigenous security outfit. Because every region in Nigeria has actually, uh, they have their own security outfit because everybody has mm -hmm. lost Everybody has lost faith in the, in the security system. So what do you have to say? Do you think this uh, is part of uh, a way that uh, we can create awareness so that the international community, the UN, and the people who are supposed to be talking and looking into Nigeria, the, the impending danger in Nigeria, do you think this can somehow wake their subconsciousness up well, if nothing else, it's going to make your, uh, your own people feel uh, safer. I wasn't actually a police officer, by the way. I'm a, a peace commissioner. That's a peace commissioner. Yes. But however, it's, uh, it will help make your own people aware of the fact that they are in danger, but it will also give them a feeling of security that somebody is actually looking after their interests other than a non-active government or who is only there uh, for their own interest. It would appear as an outsider. I might be wrong, but that's the way it looks from here. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and, and then now, when you look at, uh, when you look at the, the blacklist, the, the Nigeria has been blacklisted by the, Uni by the United States. Uh, you know, Donald Trump administration have blacklisted Nigeria. And before, before this uh, blacklisting of Nigeria, they have also placed Nigeria on watch list. Do you think also this is, uh, you know, towards the right direction? Because uh, Nigeria has been seen, uh, uh, you, you know, with, uh, from America uh, contest that they have persecuted Christians and there is need to place more sanction on Nigeria. Do you think this is the right direction? Uh, it could be, but now is also a good time, bearing in mind that Trump is on his way out and that the new president is taking over. It could be a good time for you good people in Biafra to make a strong case to uh, the new president, Biden, and start making to him now before he even gets into his position to highlight the fact of what's going on. Biafra were known, uh, the Biafrans were known as very strong religious people. The Ibus were one of the people who brought religion to that part of Africa. So it's needed to be protected. And uh, start with Biden and see where he goes. He's actually a Catholic, so he may well listen if you can get hold of his ear. I like that. Thank you. Biafrans are very religious uh, uh, people and they, are, they need to be protected. This is a very strong one. This is a very strong one from you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Liam, 
uh, what do you, what opi- can we hear your opinion? What, how do you think we, sh- we could uh, call the attention of uh, this uh, international organization like the UN? You know, uh, how do you think we should call, uh, what, what do you think we should do to, to make sure that everybody start talking apart from, apart from this media awareness? Okay, so, yes, well, I was basically talking about the question of social media. To an extent, we were talking about the material. You know, is it possible uh, to get video coverage of what's happening? Because once it goes out on social media, you change the UA into having to do something. So, I'm just wondering, is it different social media in Nigeria? Uh, yeah, I, I, the, you know the uh, the microphone is somehow uh, fluctuating, like uh, you know, uh, yeah. so it's breaking. So I, I, I think I'll try it again. What I, what I was saying was, is there censorship of social media, like video coverage of these atrocities coming out of Nigeria? Because to get the UN's attention, people are watching these atrocities, then they will change and doing something. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That's exactly that's exactly what, what I'm doing. What we are what we are trying to do, you know, creating the awareness through the social media, and of course that uh, that has gone a long way. Uh, it is part of the awareness we have created. When the people, or uh, when the innocent youth were killed in Lagos State, it was through the social media. The uh, the CNN reported it, and the Nigeria government threatened CNN. They want to place sanctions on them and all that. Of course, they don't have the capacity to place sanction on CNN, but they but they threaten the CNN. Uh, you know, you know, they issue uh, all kind of threat because what the CNN used came from the people in the street. And what about <clears throat> what about YouTube? That's, that that would be a very good vehicle. Yeah, uh, um, uh, I didn't get that. Okay, so what I'm saying is, what about YouTube? It's already a very good vehicle for getting information out to the world. Yes. We 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 have uh, we have uh, lost uh, uh, Tricia. Tricia will be hosted in a different program because she is having a very serious uh, network uh, network issues, and uh, that thing is happening to to Mr. Uh, Liam as well. Uh, Mr. Ronan, uh, now yeah. yeah, now that uh, you know uh, about 600, 600 uh, school children were kidnapped last weekend. And uh, and uh, the uh, the uh, the government has come to 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 you know uh, make different claims. Some in some uh, water they claim that uh, the uh, the kidnapped uh, were about three hundred people, and then in some quarters they claim four hundred, and then uh, at the end of the day they come to claim that they are now in touch with the kidnappers. And then later on, the, <laughs> you know, the uh, Boko Haram terrorists, they came and claimed responsibility of the kidnap. And everything has become contrary to what the government uh, have actually uh, claimed. So the question now is, do you, think, do you think with the current security breach and in, in Nigeria, do you think there is a there is hope with what have happened you know between 2015 the killings and the kidnapping and the school are shutting down for for only for the reason being that there is a serious security threat in nigeria do you think with this kind of uh with this kind of uh, information on ground do you think there is a hope for any country like this? There's always hope, and you must never give it up. As I said, our country is only a third of the size of yours, and we went through all this. We had religious problems with religion being put down and everything else. But at the moment, you have not just religious problems, you have problems of children being kidnapped. You were saying as to the different numbers that are reported, one child, 
being kidnapped, one woman being raped is too many. And there are, I mean, there's 13 million of you there in Biafra. You'll have to defend yourselves to protect the women and protect the children. If the children are gone, so is Biafra. Wow. We have to defend ourselves, protect our women and our children. That's absolutely. That's very important. And you, and you have to let it be known to the international press that this is happening and you're struggling to try and defend them. It's the international press that will bring pressure on the United Nations and uh, all the other powers that will be. We have to do everything possible to bring these things to the international media who, we, who are going to put pressure on these uh, uh, world organizations, UN and all that, to begin to put the things in the right place. Yeah, and remember, in Facebook, if I put something on Facebook here in Ireland, it will only be seen in Ireland. Mm. It's only true, uh, the nun that uh, Liam was talking about, uh, Sister Helen, who is a Nigerian, if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have heard about any of this. Uh, and it was only from her sending uh, snippets every night just to annoy us all and keep us awake. Uh, we would never have heard of it. So. Mm. The problem is that the public throughout the whole of Europe and the other parts of the world do not know what's happening and how awful it really is down there. You really need to get to the media anywhere and everywhere you can. Get every person in Nigeria that has a phone, a computer, anything to send, but make sure what they send, they can back up. So real stuff, real news, not fake stuff, you saw what happened in America because of fake news for the last three months. So make sure it's real. Make sure you can back it up and send it to every single media you can find. Google the names of the newspapers and send it to their editors and just let them know what is the terrible atrocities that are happening in your country. When I saw it at first, I didn't believe that it was true. I thought this is more Facebook makeup stuff, bodies lying down. But it very quickly became clear to me that it was very, very real and very, very wrong. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. This advice, I believe uh, some uh, of our men are taking record of the advice you are giving now, which is we must begin to approach all the mainstream medias and, you know, bombarding them with facts and figures that we yeah. are ready to back up and not just fake news because the truth is that we think that they knew what is going on in nigeria they don't know no that is the fact and, I believe. and as liam said earlier on they're so involved with their own internal problems and with COVID and all the rest of it that the sight on the world news has slipped away you've had the american presidential uh, election taking up huge media you have COVID taken it all up, and there's various other disasters around, but nobody on an international basis is sending out the true story of what is happening in Biafra. Hmm. That's 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 a fact. I agree with you. I agree with you. Now, when you when you look at uh, uh, you know the uh, the uh, not the Nigeria as a state, Nigeria as a state, because this uh, it is not only the killings in nigeria we are talking about we are also talking about the possibility to solve africa problem by disintegrating nigeria because nigeria is not moving forward you know because of the uh, divergent view cultural differences and the a particular section of nigeria which is the fulanese they are not interested in nation building they are interested in turning the Nigerian nation to into Islamic State. So this has, you know, uh, lingered for many years that when we talk about restructuring Nigeria, which is to restructure the country so that every region, either through the tribal line or ethnic line, so that every uh, region could be able to, to build their own economy according to their pace. But this particular Fulani, Muslim Fulanis, they don't want to restructure Nigeria. 
that was the reason why we went to war in 1967 and that was the reason mm -hmm. why uh, the uh, uh, good luck jonathan had the same uh, idea to restructure nigeria these people turned turned it down and now we are saying we are tired of being in a country that does that does not respect human life dignity of life right to live of women and children and for this reason we say we want to exit from nigeria and of course the united kingdom has become one of the backbone of nigeria state so what do you think what do you think should be done you know apart from the media apart from the media aspect of it which we have taken very seriously because this is your advice now we are going to take it very seriously apart from the media what do you think should be done we you know to to salvage the damages that this uh, uh, entity called nigeria you know will bring even before we begin to think about the dissolution and all that what what should we do especially with the united kingdom and uh, who actually they colonized nigeria what do you think we should do if uh, if that advice can be given by you I love the way you ask me simple questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, think, I, I think to start with, Simon, you have to look inwards. Do you have the people that are capable of running a country? Do you have the people that are educated enough to take on the rest of the world in running the country to look after your interests? Now, bearing in mind, you started talking about Nigeria as a whole. To me, there has got to be something terribly wrong at the way the country is being run. If a country that has 200 million people living in it, if I said that to people here, they'd laugh at me saying there isn't a country that big. If you have a country that has 200 million people, they are with gold, with oil, they with all the natural resources, are one of the richest countries in the world. And you have people dying in the street because they don't have food. You have people dying because they haven't got running water. They haven't got electricity because, you know, they can't get it because the government won't sort it out. There is something radically wrong. Now, if I'm not careful, I'd be accused of trying to cause a rebellion or a revolution. But the answer has to be with yourselves. It would appear from the outside that if... Uh, the, your own country was separated and running itself, you would probably make a good fist of it. But before you do or try to do that, so you don't fail, bearing in mind that happened before, you have to make sure you have the right people to run it, you have to have the right plans, and you have to be able to actually control it. Now you have, is it 13 and a half, 14 million people there to look after. That's, uh, you know, the most at any time I had in work was about 60. But uh, that's a huge number to try and do. Our country is only 4 million. And uh, it's running now and running properly. Uh, it's been, you know, so long, 1948, it became a republic and, and fully running. So it's, uh, it is possible. And I think you can do it. And I think you probably have the will. But you need to get your people behind you and you need to let the world know you're struggling to run as a country and you want their help. Good. Thank you very much. Ask for it. Ask for it. If you don't ask for their help, you won't get it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was a very brilliant one. Ask for the help. If you don't ask for the help, you wouldn't get it. Get it. That's a very direct one. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, Ranon, uh, I, I, really, uh, I really like what you said. You said that for you to be able to uh, run a country, you need to have the people who are capable of running the country. And uh, l let me put it to you that uh, Nigeria, uh, according to them today, is about uh, estimated to be about 206 million people and in these 206 million people the when you the biafrans the biafrans apart from the biafrans within nigeria biafrans in diaspora you know and uh, uh, the oduduwas oduduwas are also agitating for their freedom uh, at the moment so the oduduwas 
and Biafrans in, in diaspora, uh, you know, contribute uh, the second uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, to the Nigeria economy. They, they, after the oil, the, uh, the diasporans contribute the biggest to the GDP of Nigeria. Now, when you go uh, to diaspora, uh, the people that are contributing in running the government, uh, for example, in the United States and the United Kingdom, the professionals from Nigeria are from Biafra and, and the, uh, Yoruba and Oduduas. Now, these are the people that you found in different government in, in around the world. You found them in, in Canada. We have like a minister of justice, like George in Canada, you know, by in government. We have those in the US who are doing very well, like, you know, working for the government of the United States. Uh, just the recent one uh, is the, uh, the doctor who uh, spearheaded the uh, the corona uh, pandemic uh, the coronavirus vaccine uh, he is a biafran he is a biafran this is just the latest he is a biafran and these are the kind of professionals that are capable of you know running a country to compete among the best in the world and this this kind of this kind of people are not even given the chance to run Nigeria because the idea and the structure of Nigeria is not like to, to be a progressive nation. Rather, it is to, to become the second Turkey in history, which is the main agenda of the government is to turn Nigeria into Islamic State. So every project, every project of the government is going towards an um, uh, like a, a religious conquest, a, a religious conquest instead of uh, more of an economic dri driving uh, nation. Now, now, uh, when we are talking about trying to bring our people together or looking inward, looking inward to know whether we are capable of running a nation, I would put it to you that the Nigeria, like you say, you don't know what is the problem with this Nigeria that have all manner of uh, uh you know natural resources and uh, all that you see let me ask answer the question what is wrong with nigeria is because is uh, is the people called the fulanese the fulanese they are nomadic in nature they are not progressive they don't go to school and they are not ready to embrace civilization so everything in their mind is how to turn Nigeria into Islamic State. And the president today has been, you know, longing and fighting to become the president of Nigeria since 1980. He, he came as a military uh, head of state through a coup. He killed people to become the president then and he failed they kicked him out and then after that he served under one of the most notorious military head of state called general abacha abacha died he was the minister of petroleum and the ptf he supervised the looting of nigeria treasury by abacha this man said abacha was not corrupt but as i'm talking to you today the corruption of Abacha become a global, a global thing because his money, the money he looted from Nigeria is still being repatriated to Nigeria in hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars every year. So now, when he become the president, he is not interested in bringing in the people who are the Biafrans and the Oduduans, especially those who have the competency who have the experience to run a nation. So what he did was to bring people who are more religious than, uh, you know, state men. And he made sure he sacked everyone, especially from the security chiefs. He appointed all Muslim northerners into the, into the security uh, apparatus in Nigeria. So when we begin to talk about 
the uh, the uh, the country that don't have the the capability to run a nation i think we are talking about nigeria because you have people who can run nigeria and make nigeria one of the best country in this world but they will never give them the chance to do that because of the authorial motive which is the islamic agenda now now if we are looking at the Biafrans, a separated or a dissolved Nigeria. We are thinking that dissolving Nigeria will make the northern Nigeria who are now practicing Sharia law, the 12th state, they have embraced Islamic state, they have embraced Sharia law, they are practicing Sharia law within Nigeria. So if we divide Nigeria into this line, we believe that these different countries will be able to attain to their potential and they will progress and develop according to their own uh, space what do you think about that um well it still brings back to where i was there are there are obviously people there that are capable of doing things um so how you're going to get them to come together is a, is a different matter um, and how you're going to join them together to make sure they're working on behalf of Biafra. They may well be working up in uh, Nigeria somewhere else. As I said, I can't understand how one of the richest countries in the world have people dying of hunger in the street, no running water, no food, no anything. It would appear that the quickest way to solve your problems would be to uh, split from Nigeria. Now, I'm, I'm not inciting revolution here before I get arrested, but it's, uh, it would appear that that would be the best thing for your own country. It has all its own natural resources. It has its own people. And uh, 13 and a half, 14 million people are an awful lot of people to make a new country. But I would start by getting the support. Get, first of all, the people that have the capability. Use them as your frontline spokespeople. Get in contact with the new American uh, president. Get in contact with the president of Ireland. Now, there's also a prime minister here, but the president is a man who listens, and he's an inter international statesman. Get in touch with the prime minister here. Um, he has a, a title, Taoiseach, uh, which is Irish, which you won't be able to spell, so you can write to the uh, the Prime Minister, they'll get it anyway, and do the same to all the countries in Europe. Send them photographs, send them factual news, tell them exactly what it's like. Because when I saw it first, I did not believe it. I saw it on Facebook and I said, well, that's enough, it's not true. But in fact, a lot of what uh, was there, I have been shown to be true and it's in a sad state. You know, I'm just one little individual in a small country a long way away from you, but uh, I have been educated quickly by a, a Carmelite nun here who comes from Nigeria. She's a Nibu lady, and uh, she also teaches me, by the way, even at my age, uh, I can be taught, she teaches me how to do religious icons. So I get an earful about Nigeria before I get my cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> I see that. Push, I see that. push the message home. Get the message outside the country that your country needs help. It needs to be separated off. But as I said, make sure you have, as they used to say, make sure you have your ducks in a row. Make sure you have the people to slot into each job. And if you haven't, start looking for them now. Thank you very much. I like that. If you don't have, start looking for them right now. M Mr. Ronan, can you tell us, you mentioned that uh, in your own country, uh, what is the population of your country? Uh, well, including Northern Ireland, it comes in at about five, but the Republic of Ireland is uh, about four million. Four million people? Yep. Uh, uh, do you know that uh, uh, one state in Nigeria has about four million, more than four, five million people, a state. Well, we're small, but we have an effect on the world. They wow. all either love us or hate us. <laughs> wow. Wow. Interesting. 
Interesting. Now, uh, okay. Ireland is involved. Ireland is involved in the United Nations and it's involved in various other. Our peacekeeping troops here have been all around the world. They've actually been to Nigeria, um, but uh, down to Biafra when the civil war was on. The Irish troops are famous around the world as peacekeepers. Wow. From that four million? From that four million. Interesting. It did, it did drop by millions because uh, in the end of the 1800s here, we had what they called a famine. In actual fact, it was all the food was taken and exported and the local crops failed. So the people died of hunger and were put out of their houses and had a, a terrible time. This country got a terrible uh, pasting in its history. And uh, it's getting itself back up again and is now held up uh, around the world. It's part of the United Nations, it's part of uh, the European Union. And they have a strong voice. There is no reason why a country like yours that is three times bigger than us can't do the same. You have the will. It's a matter of getting the people together to do it. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I really agree with you. You know, I really agree with you. And you have given us, actually, you have given us uh, quite a number of uh, uh, good advice uh you know riches uh reaching reaching out to people uh you know reaching out to president uh reaching out to people in government uh all over the world uh, irrespective of whether we get to respond or not reaching out to them you know telling them the reason why they must support us and the reason why we feel that uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the security of life and property of people in Nigeria and in that in that region uh, could be more protected in a, a, dis, a dissolution or in a dissolve uh, in Nigeria because mm -hmm. that is exactly what we are looking at. Now remember, anybody in Biafra can see Facebook in Biafra. Nobody up here can see it. Nobody, you know, in any other parts of Europe can see it. So there's no point in telling the people in Biafra what's happening in Biafra. They know only too well to their own cost what's happening. So you need to tell the rest of the world. That's my one bit of advice to you tonight. Now, I am not a man of great knowledge, but that would be my one piece of advice. Get your story told. Make people listen. Don't continue having children stolen, women raped, people being shot in the streets because they carry the national flag, anything else. That is not acceptable. Go forth and be Christians. Believe in your religion and believe in most of all in your country. Hmm. This is very important. Get your story told. Don't allow your children to be kidnapped. Don't allow your women to be raped. Mm -hmm. Don't allow your children to be killed. Get your story out. Mr. Ronan, I, I, I'm telling you, this is a $1 million advice. And, uh, 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 you know, uh, nobody is an island of knowledge irrespective of what we have done so far, believe me, uh, this advice this evening will be taken very seriously. Uh, start writing to the uh, to different president, irrespective of whether you get a response or not. We are going to be writing and uh, we are going to be uh, furnishing the news media with a factual and not fake news uh, and a, a news or pictures or images that we can defend to be fact and uh, figures and then um, we follow it up you know if, whether we get to respond from there or not we have to be doing that and above all believe in yourselves believing in yourself we do believe in ourselves all right that's the, that's the starting point thank you very much thank you very much you know uh as as we are longing to have our long our young nation we will be open uh you know for advices from uh, you know all angle and all that are you aware 
uh, the, uh, the kind of natural resources we have uh, in different parts of Nigeria. Do you have knowledge of it? I do, yes, yeah. With your gold, your oil, your precious stones, um, and I am educated here daily by Sister Helen, so I get to hear what's going wrong. Yes, yes. We have, we have in almost all the state uh, in Nigeria, there are some kind of uh, solid minerals and there are natural resources like gold, diamond, uh, uraniums, and what have you so so and uh, this country has become the poverty capital of the world can you imagine that and yet the people are starving and yet the people are starving and uh can you also uh understand how bad nigeria nigeria system you know is that you have something like limestone you have and all the raw materials that you can use to construct your own road your own mm. road if i show you this the uh, the state of road in nigeria you are not going to believe me i've seen pictures of them and uh, mind you one or two of the roads up here are not much better <laughs> but the majority no that's we've very modern roads here but you can see from the photographs you can see from what you see on on uh, facebook and that what the roads are like I mean, they are atrocious and as I keep saying, as one of the richest countries in the world, you haven't proper roads to drive on, you haven't got food, you haven't got uh, running water, you haven't got electricity. You know, the basics are wrong, totally wrong. And this has to be shown to the world. Most people don't realize it. They say Nigeria is a big, wealthy country. Should they have everything? Let's have a look somewhere else. Hmm. Get your story out and see where you go from there thank you very much if i didn't get anything today i you know i am going to take one thing go home and it is get your story out and see what you get from there thank you very much mr ronald you're, you're very welcome and i hope things work out for you simon if i can be of help to you at any stage shout as I said, I'm not a man of great knowledge, but I have been around a long time. Yes. So if I can help you at any time, all you have to do is contact me. Thank you very much. I'm going to call you again. I'm going to definitely need you again because, you know, the advice you have given to me this evening and by extension to all Biafrans are so, you know, rich uh, in wisdom and uh, we need to be taking them step by step. So I will take this advice home now work on it process all the information you have given to us and when we are done with that i'm going to bring you again to the program with a different topic lovely remember what i'm telling you or what i'm saying are my feelings as somebody not involved in your country yes. with no vested interest but just looking at it in the cold light of day this is what i see and you, you strongly condemn the killings of Christians in Nigeria? I condemn the, the killings of Christians or anyone in Nigeria, Good. and particularly uh, the Christians there. Good. That's the way I was brought up and what I believe most of Nigeria was, uh, and in particular um, your own area was always a strong Christian area. Uh, Mr. Ronin, uh, Mr. Ronam, let me, uh, yes. let, uh, uh, let me play a video. I'm going to bring in a video. I want you to watch this video before you leave. Uh, one moment. One moment. I am trying to update this. Uh, uh, I remember years ago, Simon, when something like this happened to me in the airline and a very important passenger looked at me and all he said was, 
you know how to use that thing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I, I want to. I want to play a video uh, that probably you may, you may, you may not. You may, maybe you have not seen this uh, particular uh, video, uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, I will uh, play the video. This video was actually uh, put together uh, by me. I made a voice over over this uh, okay. video, so I would like to play it now so that you will understand. It is live. This is the One video. moment. And this are the the video is going to be up in a moment. Uh, yeah. So I want to I want you to look at this video. You are looking, looking at the video. video. The military are claiming they have not recruited Boko Haram members into Nigeria army. It is lie. This is the video. And these are Boko Haram members taken out of office as Nigeria soldiers. And those of you from Biafra land will be sent. They will just put like three, 10, 20 of them amongst you and send you to Northeast. At the end of the day, all of you will be killed and only them will survive the Haram attack. Those of you who are already in Nigeria army from Biafra land, anytime they send you to Northeast, resign. If you do not resign, the video you are looking at will be the way you will end. You will end just like these people you are looking on the video. Boko Haram will capture you because they will lead you to a place where Boko Haram will capture you and you will not escape. They will lead you to the den of Boko Haram and they will survive. This is a systematic annihilation of Biafra army, future armies of Biafra. They are annihilating you, eliminating you now, and we cannot allow that to continue. Stop joining Nigeria army. We need you in Biafra. Biafra need you. They want to continue to reduce the population of Biafra men. And then we come to international community, international media, and lie that no Boko Haram has been recruited. Let the world see that Nigeria has recruited thousands and thousands of Boko Haram members into Nigeria army. That is even those who are in battlefield. Nigeria army today is controlled by Boko Haram. Burutai. Burutai is the chief commander of Boko Haram. And he will continue to give approval of the recruitment of Boko Haram members. Stop joining Nigeria army. And international news media should see the lies in Nigeria army. The man you are looking at, the man, the video you are watching now, he lied. He said that the Kohara member can become a president. On video, on camera. And then after that, he denied it. And yet, Boko Haram stands, has laid his arms and comes back, turns him away, away from his negativity. He stands to be a president of this country. He stands to aspect any position in this country. Why? And yes, the stand chance of becoming Nigeria president, and they are finally Nigeria president in Buhari. Boko Haram is finally the chief of army staff. And Boko Haram member is the one who just spoke on camera. And he is commander in the army. This is the reason you cannot see why Boko Haram cannot be defeated. And the reason why they are using Boko Haram into military military and to continue jihad and they will send them part of them to Biafra land and part of them to do with those fighting in the northeast 
and they will be shooting you people from the back. Stop joining Boko Haram controlled Nigeria Army. Former members of the insurgent group Boko Haram who announced surrendered voluntarily to the Nigerian Army have been in camps since 2017 for the de-radicalization, rehabilitation, and reintegration program of the Operation Safe Corridor, which has now come to an end. The area of FICA, government representatives, and the judge of a federal high court joined the ex-insurgents who swear on the oath of allegiance before a justice panel before their graduation. During their stay at the camp, they undertook vocational training and passed through stages of transformation that deemed them worthy to fit into the society again. And that is how the government representative the judge, uh, the judge of the Federal High Court, swore so Boko Haram members the oath of allegiance to join Nigeria Army. But in this report, like the corrupt media in Nigeria, they said after the graduation of their vocational training. So it is now uh, in Nigeria, when you finish a vocational training, you will be sworn an oath of allegiance to go and carry out what you learn in your vocational training. Isn't it deception in the highest order? It is deception in the highest order. And now you are looking at those who have graduated from the vocational training in military uniform. from this video you will notice that the people standing there we are all in civilian clothes and ask yourself is it how the uh, induction into nigeria army takes place is it how nigeria recruits its soldiers normally is it is it the normal exercise of recruiting the man standing there is he a military man or a governor of the northern nigeria or another state in nigeria members 95 were already handed over to their respective states. Uh, Mr. Rona, you just yeah, uh, yeah you just want uh, uh you know a, a, a picture and video evidence of uh, of uh, army uh, recruiting uh, terrorists to serve in nigeria army what do you think do you think this is right do you think uh, it, this is good well it, it really it, to i think get terrorists involved in anything is the last thing you need but unfortunately the sound on that was so muffled i couldn't make out what it was saying but uh, I don't believe the terrorists should be involved in your in your local army until such a time as they have stood back from being terrorists and have given themselves up and said, look, you know, I'm here. I'm no longer involved in terrorism. I want to save my country. Hmm. That's, a... that's my that's my thought. Yeah. Uh, well, unfortunately, the, the Nigeria, the Nigeria army has recruited the uh uh the uh the uh, uh the so-called repentant uh boko haram we know we know as the plan of this uh, terrorist that you know nobody can believe there is anything like repentant uh because uh they uh, they, they continue to ambush the nigeria army and all that but we, we will not go deep into that discussion some people want to ask you question some people are asking that you know, if we can bring them in, they want to ask you a question. Do you think you still have like 20 minutes with us? If it's a complicated question, I'll just say I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, we are going to uh, we are going to uh, take maybe. Do you think we can take up to five questions? Go ahead. All right. So the question will be coming uh, on the screen, on the screen of this uh, uh, broadcast. So uh, the audience, uh, 
uh, our audience, <coughs> some of you, some of you want that we we put the video, we connect the line, the telephone line. Uh, we are not going to connect the telephone line at the moment. What we are going to do is that if you have a question, uh, just ask the question on the comment section, and we will put the the question uh, on the screen and then address it. And probably we are going to take like five five questions. So the questions start now. Yes, I'm going to select those with reasonable question. So the question start now. Put in your question and it will be on the screen. This is not a question. This is a comment, which is a very good one. People are picking your advice, Mr. Ronan. Uh, one thing, one thing is very important in this broadcast. Biafra should start now to bring handle our state of affair as a nation to be in the front line of this struggle. Brilliant. Yeah, that's a very good statement. Uh, if they're not involved, you can't expect them to work. Yes. If they are involved, they're there from the beginning to start the building. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are waiting for question now. And I didn't think anybody had listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think they do. <laughs> Uh, somebody is asking, how do we get, how do we get the address official of the Irish president? I think uh, this is available. I think this information is available on public domain. Yeah, if uh, if they're watching this on Google or watching it on anything else, all you have to do is Google the address and the title of the President of the Republic of Ireland. And you can do the same for each country, asking for the Prime Minister, write to both the Prime Minister and the President. Some of the European countries don't have Presidents, but they do have um, Prime Ministers, and you can write to them all. You can get a full list of the whole government and write to all the Ministers, uh, if you have somebody that will take the time and sit down and do it. You can run off a letter and just change all the addresses. Same letter to everybody. So you're bringing to uh, the attention of the world to what's happening in Biafra. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ronan. By the way, if you keep calling me Mr. Ronan, I'm going to have to start calling you Mr. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> I'm only Ronan. <laughs> There's a lady that I talked to from uh, Nigeria who keeps calling me sir, and I told her I'm yeah. not in the army. My name is Ronan. <laughs> The other questions have gone asleep. I must have bored yeah. them all. Yeah, there are so many questions. I have to select the one that oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I have to select a reasonable, reasonable just, question. We'll just ask the easy ones. Don't make a fool of me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no.
Okay, the question is coming very fast and uh, I'm having difficulty speaking on them. Yes, and uh, uh, somebody uh, uh, refrain the uh, reference to your your co your comment. Uh, I think it's gonna be on uh, on the screen. Short in a short moment. You must start writing to all. Yeah, he said. Yeah, he said. He said we must start writing to all the international bodies, whether we get a response or not. We must start telling our story to reach to the to reach the all. I'm very sure the international leaders uh, are waiting for that. Yeah, that's that's your advice, and I think I, I we are taking it seriously. Yeah, well, if you don't tell them, they won't know and they won't listen. If you tell them the story, they may listen, they may not. But you've got nothing to lose by contacting them and telling them how it is. Thank you. It's very good. Okay, I think uh, almost the question people are asking here, you have you actually have addressed almost all of them. You've you, because you've actually touched on all the things that people are asking here. You've touched in all you've touched all these questions. And uh, I didn't see the one I want yet. Come down <laughs> and be the president. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I am. I am being selective. <laughs> I think I need like two questions, two reasonable, two reasonable questions, because almost all the questions here you you've answered them. Uh, you know, to the best of my knowledge. Good. It's to the best of mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is saying to me while you're waiting uh, that uh, Mazi Namdi Kanu is uh, also very good, like yourself. <laughs> yes, he's our leader. He's our leader, Mazi Namdi Kanu. There you go. Well, tell him when he takes over, I'm looking for a well-paid job. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, have you any more questions, sir? Yeah, all the questions, believe me, uh, Ronan, all the questions you have addressed them. Question like, how do we go to, how do we get to mainstream media in Irish and all that? All this information you have answered because it is just Googling them and you are going to get the answer. I'm just looking for a reasonable questions that you have not addressed because these questions here, you have actually addressed all of them. Uh, the cool. only thing. Yeah. The only thing, yeah, believe me, you have addressed all of them. The only thing that the people should do is after this broadcast, they can go and watch this video again and get how you you trashed all these questions they are asking now because you've actually addressed all of them. And and of course, I know 
when I see a question that needed more elaboration, I will now pull it up uh, on the screen so you can, you can, you know, make more comment on that. Absolutely. By the way, if I haven't answered it already, I don't know the answer to start with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I'm afraid that the other two people from Ireland, unfortunately, had technical problems and they've gone. Yes, they have network. They have serious, serious. You are the only person who do not have uh, any network issues here. You know, they I have. Can't uh, I can't help it. It's the way I am. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've been told that Patricia said that uh, when she gets fixed up, she will get back in touch with you again. Okay, all right. So is she coming back on this pro on this uh, program? Because I uh, cannot not this evening, not this evening, but she will contact you again once she gets sorted out. All right, great, great. And then uh, 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 Sir Roland, of course, your name is not Roland, but anyway, how can we able to reach church organization in uh, Iceland, not Iceland, this is Ireland, uh, or any country that will help uh, let the world know <coughs> there are Christians in Nigeria? Well, the, to go through the... Um, to, to go through Ireland, as an example, uh, if you wanted to get to the head of the church, you would go to someone like the Papal Nuncio here, who would be the Pope's representative in Ireland. Uh, and if you get in touch again with Google, you will see all the um, see all the parish priests, or you'll see the bishops, or the clergy around, and you can contact them directly and ask them for their prayers and their help. The same will happen in any of them. If you go to Scotland, you'll get the head of the Church of Scotland. You'll also get the Catholic bishops there. They will all be found on Google or on whichever search uh, one you look at. Yeah, of course, this is uh, this question is, I think, is not, uh, uh, this is something that should be, uh, everybody should be aware that uh, unarmed people can be tagged a terrorist. I just click on it, so you don't need to address that question. Uh, okay. Unarmed people bear terrorists. Uh, that's a, a a long question to try and get a real answer for. <laughs> I, think, I, I think I think we are we are we are done because. Uh, most of the, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I, this, th there is this kind of question I'm looking for. And, uh, you know, uh, so they are not coming up. I believe uh, those who are asking questions now can go back and, uh, you know, watch this, uh, uh, watch this uh, video. And uh, they are, they, most of the things they are asking, uh, you have addressed, addressed, addressed them all. So, so. Okay. Uh, the one that was just on the screen there now about the armed people. It depends on what your country accepts as reasonable. Mm. If they think it's reasonable for that, then you allow it. If they think it's not reasonable in your country, you have 13 and a half million people to stop it. Mm. Exactly, exactly. So now, have have you exhausted me totally? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Ronan, for for being part uh, of this program. I'm going to I'm going to call on you again, you know, so we can have an another interactive uh, section, you know, because uh, uh, I am the kind of person that want to stay close to those who has been around, you know, and I can learn a lot because what from having you on this program. 
has made me learn a lot of things. I have learned a lot of uh, things today, and uh, I'm going to make sure I apply some of the things I have learned in my in this journey of uh, freedom of Biafra. So I'm going to bring you again and let us uh, discuss uh, probably on a different uh, topic. And, uh, and that, that's only that's only so that I'll have to go off and learn more about Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> and in particular Biafra. Yes. But Simon, yeah. it, before you go, I hope all the people that are struggling to keep the religion, that God and his mother will bless them. Amen. And we have two patron saints here. One is St. Patrick, and the other one is a very strong saint, St. Bridget. She was a very famous lady here in Ireland. And hopefully, she was famous for a, a cloak that she used to wear. And if she wanted to do something, she would spread the cloak out and she would perform a miracle. So hopefully she will put her cloak around all the people of Biafra and protect you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 And uh, Mr. Ronan, remember that uh, the, uh, the uh, Republic of Biafra or the solution of Nigeria will also uh, uh, solve the migration issues within the Europe because we have a lot of Africans uh, trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea and they are dying there on daily basis. And this is because Africa, uh, you know, uh, it has become a continent where nothing is working. And we believe that we need to start from somewhere. Biafra people are the only, only people, only people <laughs> that, are scat that are scattered all over the world looking for greener pastures and uh, establish themselves in any country or any community they find themselves and they always contribute you know positively to to you know to to the society they find themselves and making bre breaking up nigeria we make a lot of them to go back to contribute in building the nation and this by extension is going to also safeguard the european union is going to also safeguard America and other continent. Why? Because the uh, from the United States Intelligence Agency, they have also uh, you know envisioned that the uh, the all the terrorists, the uh, ISIS, the uh, is uh, the, uh, the ISIS, Boko Haram, and other uh, 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 ter terrorist organization have assembled in Nigeria, and Nigeria is the only place where they have been able to work together, you know, for a common purpose. They are looking for a safe heaven in Nigeria so that by the time they get their, 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 their ground and be able to control the gold mining, the diamond mining, the uranium, the oil and all that, they can begin to sponsor attack to the United States, to European Union and all that. And these are the kind of messages we want the international community to know that we are suffering today, there we suffer tomorrow. If something Absolutely. Is yeah. It's so sad that so many have to leave the country to exist. Yes. Now, we, have a large, we have a large number of, of uh, various Africans here in this country. We have Nigerians uh, around. Don't stop them all coming, though, because we have Sister Helen, and we wouldn't have got her if she didn't get out. So <laughs> she... Uh, but, she came to join a religious order here, and we're all benefiting from it. Yeah, that's how we contribute positively, you know, in any, in any place we find ourselves. And now it is time that, you know, that we need to give back to Africa. We, need, we want to participate True. in building a better Africa, you know, where everybody, the, 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 the life of our women and children will be respected and the right to life will be uh, the ultimate uh, responsibility and the priority of the state. Now, it is not like that in Nigeria. One day, it will be back that Nigeria is looking after itself and that Biafra will be a fabulous country to go and see. Amen. Amen to that. Thank you very Amen. much for having you today. Uh, may God bless you for honoring this invitation. It is an honor to have you. And believe me, I am going to bring you back again for more wisdom. The honor was all mine, Simon, or, or as you insist on calling me, uh, Mr. Simon, thank you for having me on. It was an honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice Take evening. Bye-bye. Yes, uh, you see, uh, that was Ronan, uh, peace.
commissioner. I'm going to correct that. Uh, the peace uh, commissioner uh, or was a peace uh, commissioner. Uh, you see, uh, a lot of people uh, don't understand, uh, you know, what is going on in Nigeria. Like you heard him, he said, it is not only enough that we, you know, we create awareness on Facebook. We need to start going to, to the uh, mainstream media. We need to start pushing authentic information. He said he didn't even believe what he, you know, what he heard about Nigeria. But when he picked interest and start listening, he, you know, he was able to know. He didn't believe. Nobody will actually believe. So when you stay and you say the, the nobody, the international news media is not talking. Uh, the UN is not talking. Nobody is talking. You don't actually blame them. It can be that they don't know. Somebody have to write them. Now I want to ask you. Do you know how the international media actually get the news that they report? They get it from the national news media. That is the, that is the secret. The secret is that they get it from the national news media. Once the national news media carries it, and it what you know, the attention of the international news media, they have to go into pushing it. Now in Nigeria, that is not the case. The Nigerian media has been caged. They cannot report the news for CNN, BBC, and other people to carry. They can't report it. So now it has become our responsibility. And because we are taking over the media, we are going to be sending this thing to them. Because the people that will make them to report it are not reporting the news. We have to be sending it to them. So on this note, it is time we go to work. We'll be compiling news as they happen. We'll be pushing everybody as you are focusing on Twitter. As you are focusing on Twitter, focus also all the mainstream media, CNN, BBC, all of them, ABC, CBN, and all of them. We have to now invade them, their email, they are Twitter, they are everything will be invading them, sending this thing until they start reporting it. Because the Nigerian news media can never report it. They are being caged by the government. So when the news media in Nigeria don't report it, they don't, it doesn't get attention. So that is why a lot of you are surprised. Why are they not reporting this? Why are they not reporting that? Because the news media in Nigeria has been caged. We have to now break that jinx and make sure everything that happened in Nigeria, we report them and push it to them. On this note, I thank you for being part of this program. Uh, uh, the other two guests, we are going to bring them again when the network is, uh, is gonna be better. And uh, we continue from here. We will always announce to you when we have guests that we can learn a lot from. And my own job now is to go and start executing and implementing everything I have learned from Mr. Ronan today. What about you? You have to do the same. We are in this struggle together and we will turn every stone upside down until we find all the precious stones that we are looking for, for the freedom of our people. Thank you for being part of this program. See you next time. May God bless you. May God bless the Republic of Biafra. May God bless Oduduwa Republic. May God bless Arewa if they are going to accept my prayer. May God bless the Middle Belt. May God bless the indigenous people of Biafra. May God bless also Mazi Namdikano, who have taken a different step into getting the freedom for Biafra. Join this force, join this movement, and make history. Good night. <laughs>